So hi and welcome to the second part of this series. So in this part, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating our database and we'll be creating our files. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to uh, our FTP uploader. So I'm using FileZilla, here it is. I have a connection to francismacnamy.com, uh, which is the primary account for this, uh, which is the uh, hosting account for this uh, domain. So this is francismacnamy.com domain and I just added an add-on domain called min.aswc. Uh, so what I did was I FTP'd into the francismacnamy.com account and I went to my folder which as you can see here I'm storing my add-on domains in slash add-on domains slash the name of the domain and here it is here so if I go to index if I go to uh, sorry min.aswc you can see this corresponds to uh, this here so if I delete CGI bin so let's just delete that uh, and you can see there we go it says uh, it says empty directory listing. If I refresh the page now, you can see that's disappeared. So this is the directory that min.aswc is hosted in. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click, we're going to create new file, we're going to say .htaccess because we need to use htaccess for our URL shortener. Then we're going to create one more file called index.php and we actually only need two files for this whole project. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up these files. So if I click view slash edit, it will download them and open them up in my text editor. So here they are here. I'll just uh, put them into one file. So here they are here. Here's index and here's HT access. So I'm just going to say hello world just to show you that it works. And there we have, we've uploaded the file already. We uh, refresh the page and you can see it says hello world. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create our database. So we're going to go to MySQL databases. We're going to see here, it says create new database, and we're going to say min. We're just going to call it min. You can call yours whatever you want. So we'll click create database, it says out of the database. And we scroll down, and then what we have to do is we need to add a user to that database. So here's just uh, one of the users on the account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new user. So I'm going to call it, uh, let's just say, high code. And the password, I'm just going to use a random password generator, just copy this. So we click, uh, I've copied this to a safe place, we click that, we click use password. And I'm just going to open a new document, paste it in there so we don't lose it. And I'm going to click create user. So we can click save password, uh, it doesn't matter, so I'll just not save it. Let's go back and you see now all we have to do is add our user to the database. So if we see here, it says add user to database. We're just going to click Francis1 underscore high code. Then we click the database we want to add it to. In this case, there's only one. We click add user. And now we have to choose the privileges we want. So while we're developing our project, what we're going to do is we're going to click all privileges. And then as soon as we've finished uh, our project, we're going to just um, allow the privileges we need. So for example, we're not going to need the drop privilege because we're not going to want to drop any tables from our application. We're going to want to be able to only do things like that from PHP my admin. We're not going to be able to want to be able to delete things. Well, we might, but uh, for this series, we're not. So as you can see, there's loads of privileges here that we don't actually need, but we're just going to uh, allow them all for the moment. And whenever we finish development, is when we can look through these and then delete the ones we don't need to uh, make our application more secure. So if we click Save Changes, you can see it says uh, the changes have been saved. We click uh, back. So what I'm going to do here is click uh, home and now I'm going to go to PHP my admin. So here it's loading. Here we are. Uh, here's PHP my admin. So here's the database we just created. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table called links. And I'm just going to say 10 columns. We're not going to need 10 columns, but PHP my admin will only uh, add fields that are filled in. So for example, if I leave some of these fields blank, then they won't be created as columns. So we can, they'll just be basically deleted. So it just means that while we're planning it out, we won't have to uh, add additional fields afterwards. So obviously the first thing we need is an ID. Uh, we're going to, whoops, go to index, set it to primary, and then we're going to see this, this says A underscore I, that means auto increment. We're just going to click that. That means that each time a new row is added, it will automatically increment the ID by one. Here what we're going to do is we're going to put in URL, which is the URL we want to redirect to, which is going to be a varchar. Uh, let's actually say text because we don't know how long the URL could be. A varchar can only be 255 characters in length, 
and a URL can be longer than that. So it makes sense to have uh, text for the type. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have the title, we'll call it. And we'll say varchar and we'll say 32. So the maximum length that our shortened links can be is 32 characters. And that's actually all we need, I think. So let's just uh, scroll down here, click Save. And we click uh, Structure. You can see when we have three columns, the, the additional seven columns were uh, automatically removed or ignored whenever we were creating the table because they were blank. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our index page. I'm going to just open PHP brackets, PHP tags even. And what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, before that, we're going to create a form. So we're going to say uh, doc type HTML. We're just going to create a basic HTML document. Then we put the head tags in. So in this series, we're not going to be styling um, our project. We're just going to be doing uh, the actual core functionality behind it. So styling is something you can do in your own time. Uh, this is just to make sure we're not teaching unnecessary um, uh, things that are going to make the project a lot more complicated uh, and unnecessarily complicated. I want to keep it as simple as possible. So we'll just say min. Let's just say shorten your links with min.aswc and let's refresh or let's, uh, upload that so we just click uh, yes that'll upload the file go to min.aswc refresh the page and you can see the title has just changed so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a form so I'm just going to I'll actually create a h1 tag and I'll say shorten your links and then I'll create a form underneath that, uh, and the form is going to have a text box. The name is going to be, say, URL to shorten. Um, we're not going to have a value, we're just going to leave the value equal to nothing. But we're going to put a placeholder in, and we'll say, enter, let's actually just say, paste the link to shorten. Then underneath that, what we're going to do is we're going to have input type equals submit. Name is going to be shorten. And the value is going to be equal to shorten link. So let's uh, run the, uh, upload that actually, and we'll run it now. You can see it says shorten links, paste the link you want to shorten, and we click shorten link, and that should shorten it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to center everything. Uh, the center tag is actually depreciated at the moment, so you shouldn't actually use it for any uh, production website. But because we're not focused on the design in this series, we're just going to use it anyway. So we're going to say form action equals uh, index, which is going to be a equals index. But we could just say index whoops index .php, or we could just put a, a slash in. Uh, that means the same thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to say method equals post because we're posting data off. We don't want to pass any parameters in the uh, URL. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we're just going to say if is set post. And we're going to uh, check for the URL button being uh, pressed. So we'll say if is set post shorten. And echo clicked. So we just uh, we're just about to click uh, on the button. So let's click that, and you can see it says clicked. So that's it for this video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.